the teaching of Advaita Vedanta often begins with discrimination. It tells us to distinguish between our true nature and what is not our true nature, between our self and the non-self. To begin with, just feel yourself letting go of all I am thises and I am that's. I am tall, I am short, I am a male or a female, I am this age or that age. I was born, and so on. And feel that what remains is simply, I am. And when you sound I am mentally or silently, you find that it fades away into the ultimate silence. This ultimate silence is clear beyond words.
it can feel as if I am separate from the world, the body, and the mind. When I feel separate or feel that I am separate, I suffer. For this reason, it behooves us to inquire into the matter concerning whether or not separation is actually real. If it is real, then suffering shall continue. And yet, if it isn't real, then there was really no suffering there in the first place. In the first place, there was and is only this ultimate silence. If the eyes are closed, then allow the eyes to gently open. Initially, it can feel as if there's a world out there, one that is separate from me. Is that true? Ask yourself, is there anything to the world other than perceiving? In our experience, we don't discover a world. We only find perceiving, in this case, seeing. Understand that to begin with, what is given in our direct experience just now is simply color and shape or to make it even simpler just color when we stay very close to our experience of color, do we find just now a physical object in color or behind color? Here once more is the experience of color. Can we locate an entity, a physical one, that's residing within or somehow behind color? No, be very simple and innocent. Our experience only reveals color.
therefore let go of any ideas concerning independently existing physical objects to which color appears to belong, we drop all those concepts now and open more deeply to the experience of color. Then in our direct experience, is there an independent perceiver, experiencer, or seer that is evident in the experience of color? Is there an ego perceiver revealed right now in this experience that is the experience of color? No. Thus, there are no bookends. There's no independently existing physical object on one side, so to speak, nor is there an independently existing ego perceiver on the other side. They're not there. What's here is the experience of color. Now, can color be experienced apart from the process or sense of seeing? You try to turn off seeing and you seek to discover unseen color waiting in the wings, can you locate such an unseen color? No. You can't. Therefore, color arising depends upon the process or faculty of seeing. Now ask yourself the question, can seeing appear in the absence of color? And so you try to turn off color while holding on to the experience of seeing. Is that possible? No, it's not. Therefore, it's not strictly true that there's a relationship between color and seeing, nor is it strictly true, true that there is the possibility of seeing a color. Rather, there's only an identity. Color is another name for seeing, or seeing and color are identical. Consequently, we can speak in Zen language of just seeing right now. Therefore, open directly right now to the intimate 
experience of just seeing. of just wide open, relaxed, gentle, natural seeing. From seeing, try to Trace an imaginary line backward. As you trace the line backward, do you find eyes, which are organs or conduits or channels through which seeing is passing? Go very slowly. Begin with the experience of seeing and slowly move backward, looking for eyes as a medium through which seeing is passing. Where is this medium? Where are these channels? on whose account the experience of seeing is possible. Remember, if you stay only with your direct experience, what do you discover? You set aside theories, beliefs, models, and concepts, and you stick with the experience of seeing just now. As you trace this imaginary line farther and farther backward, something interesting occurs. In lieu of discovering eyes or channels, you find openness, invisible wide openness. And when you, as it were, move forward from invisible wide openness, you discover or rediscover seeing. But at no point is there a medium mediating the relationship between seeing and openness, between openness and seeing? In your experience, there is no door swinging backward from seeing to openness, nor is there a door swinging forward from openness to seeing. Instead, the experience is totally smooth, completely seamless, and utterly natural. in addition to being entirely unmediated. Then ask yourself the question, 
Is it clear that seeing is appearing to awareness or openness? Is it plain that seeing is arising to faceless, eyeless, immediate less, medium less, invisible, clear awareness or openness? And now, how many experiences are evident just now? Are there two? One called seeing and the other termed awareness? Or is there only one? There's only one experience. But if there's only one experience, then how can there be a relationship between seeing and open, empty awareness? No, they must be one and the same. But then, what is this one seamless experience made of? Whatever it is made of, it must be continuously present. What is that which is continuously present throughout all experiences. What is that which is, for example, continuously present throughout seeing arising. Awareness is that which is continuously present throughout all experiences, including seeing arising just now. Confirm then, awareness is that out of which seeing is made. There's only one experience, and its name is awareness, or openness, or aware presence. Seeing is just one provisional name we give to awareness. To awareness, revealing itself thus.
Now ask yourself the question, in my direct experience right now, is there even a hair's breadth of separation? No, it is seamless, clear transparency. Where seamless, clear transparency is another name for awareness. As a result, the separation between I, awareness, and the world was only ever apparent and was the result of conceptual confusion in the light of direct experience what is revealed is only awareness revealing itself thus only the seamlessness of clear aware presence Allow the eyes to close and open to the experience of the body as Rupert Spira likes to say, when the eyes are closed, the only experience of the body is a raw, tingling, amorphous sensation. Therefore, open to this raw, tingling, amorphous sensation. Provisionally speaking, that with which this sensation is felt could be termed the faculty of sensing. After all, something must be feeling this sensation. Call that sensing.
then ask yourself the question, can this sensation appear apart from this faculty or sense of sensing? Is there such a thing as an unsensed sensation? Can a sensation ever somehow show up without being sensed? Well, can a sight, specifically a color, ever arise without the faculty of seeing? No. Likewise, a raw, tingling, amorphous sensation can never appear without sensing. But then is there such an experience as sensing a sensation? Note that there's only one experience occurring right now. Therefore, how could there be sensing, which would count as one experience, a sensation, which would be counted as a second experience? We only find one experience. And that one experience can't be found without sensing. Therefore, sensation can be reduced to sensing, or sensation could be another name that we give to sensing. Open then not to sensation, but to sensing. and feel that sensing is more intimate with your very being, awareness. Feel that sensing is nearer to and better known by you. Can sensing ever arise in the absence of awareness? No, sensing can never arise in the absence of awareness. Where then is sensing appearing? Is sensing appearing over there? If you stay only with your direct experience, do you ever find an over there except as a concept? then set aside over there 
do ever discover sensing appearing there or close by? No, neither. Sensing is appearing here, right here. Feel how true this is. Sensing is arising right here. And as such, it is closer than close. But then where is awareness? presence or openness. It's right here. Since sensing is here, and since awareness is undeniably here, how far apart is awareness from sensing? There is no distance between sensing and awareness. In fact, the concept of distance simply doesn't apply. But then, how many experiences are clear here? Are there two? One named sensing and another named awareness? Or truly, is there only one? There's only one. Note that sensing and awareness are both here. Note furthermore that there's no distance between them. And note that there's only indeed one experience after all. Awareness, it can be said, transforms every experience it touches, and it is indeed touching, sensing just now, into itself. It is as if awareness had the magical property of taking any other apparent substance and of turning that apparent substance into its own very being or nature. In this case, this means that sensing is none other than awareness.
sense of sensing rather is awareness revealing itself thus. Therefore, just as loosely speaking, the world is none other than awareness. So, equally loosely speaking, the body or sensation is nothing but aware being. Then ask yourself the question, in my direct experience just now, do I feel any sense of separation? None. In fact, the question doesn't really arise. Finally, open to the experience of the mind. By mind, I mean thought, then open to the experience of a thought, whatever it may be. Know that you never really find a thought. You only experience thinking. Therefore, stay with thinking. With the experience of thinking arising. Then ask yourself, in thinking arising, do I see any evidence for a thinker? Is there indeed a thinker entity evident within my experience? Not at all. There's only effervescent thinking appearing or effervescent thinking arising. But then who is it or what is it that knows or is aware of effervescent thinking arising. It's awareness. It's me. I, awareness, am aware of thinking arising. Go to the experience of 
thinking. And ask yourself, what is the svarupa that is the nature or make of thinking? Go deeply into the experience of thinking. Penetrate all the way through it and see what its substance really is. The substance of thinking isn't itself thinking. Rather, its substance, its make, or nature is awareness. In fact, there's nothing to thinking other than awareness. Thinking is just an apparent limitation of aware being. And when the essence or substance of this apparent limitation is experientially understood, then it appears as it truly is, namely, as awareness. Then ask yourself the question, in my direct experience of, quote, the mind, that is of thinking arising, is there any experience of separation. None whatsoever. Therefore, the mind, being nothing but awareness, is wholeness just as the world and the body, likewise being nothing but awareness, are wholeness. And yet there really isn't a world, a body, or a mind. There's only experience. without compartments or divisions. And in fact, there isn't even experience. There's only aware presence. revealing itself, only aware presence being itself. Hence, we begin our inquiry by temporarily disentangling awareness from what it at first blush is not.
Only then do we revisit our experience of the world, the body, and the mind in order to discover that they too are nothing but experience, meaning nothing but awareness. We first remove awareness from what it at first blush isn't in order to reveal awareness. But then we return to experience, specifically the world, the body and the mind, in order to experientially understand that their very essence, heart or substance, has never been anything other than awareness. What is thus understood is that there's only awareness. Awareness without any separation within itself between itself and some other without any divisions, without any compartments. Awareness is ever seamless, always Magnificent, ever shining in its own beautiful glory. to feel this deeply. And is to experience the sweetness of awareness is stunning clarity. To feel this fully is not even to fall in love with awareness. It is to be in love with awareness. Not even that. It is to be loving awareness. <laughs> 